The Japanese governments may have confirmed aliens and UFOs. Drop a thumbs up and let's get into it. It's gonna get bumpy, guys. Get ready for this one. And shout out to all of you. We're getting very close to 4,000 subscribers. If you haven't already, subscribe and check out Destination Declassified. W channel, W channel. Let's see what they said. In order to understand and appreciate the change in mentality by Japanese leaders with regards to the UFO phenomenon, we must look back into their past, to a history which ingrained their initial sense of skepticism, as well as recent events that have influenced such a cosmic shift in outlook. Indeed, there are many across the land who have been taught that the concept of little green men from outer space is nothing more than a fairy tale, a bedtime story to tell the children before... The crazy them. thing here is that every time in history, right, is it imagination or is it facts? I want to know your thoughts on it because whenever you see movies or whenever you hear about it, everybody's assuming the same. We're all assuming the same. Little green aliens or gray aliens. These are the two big alien species that comes to everyone's mind. If you want to talk about aliens, they would be like, yeah, I saw a little gray alien, a little green alien. I saw a big gray alien, big eyes, small nose, small slit, uh, just slit for a mouth, ears barely visible, right? Big head. That's what we hear all the time. Is it really imagination? Are we really thinking the same? Or is it bigger than that? I need to know your thoughts on it because this is something that we all think. And that's just the odds of that shouldn't be this high. Or they drift off to sleep. Many known records, public or otherwise, have always downplayed the notion that entitles, notion that entities not of this world are making plans to visit us earthlings if they haven't done so already, and is not surprising considering their cultural inheritance. However, what is a remarkable truth is that the designer of the famous Japanese Mitsubishi A6M Zero yeah. fighter jet, Horikoshi Jiro, had actually based aeronautical prototypes and blueprints on that of flying saucers. Jiro, whose famous long-range carried based fighter craft, which was active and effective during the Asia-Pacific War and coexisting World War, had to turn to ja Japan is a great example of pushing everything aside for a good future for their citizens, right? Because the US dropped like what? Like two, two, pow, you know what I mean? They dropped two bombas, uh, two nukes on them. Just absolutely crazy. Japan is a very good example for just pushing everything aside. Let's come together and let's do better for our nation. Let's uh, grow together. Let's actually say no to violence. Uh, let's say no to war. I'm not saying that it will never happen again. It st certainly can happen. Things can definitely change in the future. But Japan is just uh, doing the right things right now, in my opinion. To the maneuverability of alien-like crafts to assist in his invention. Horikoshi produced an unpublished paper on flying discs in conjunction with the man who introduced the world to these circular spectacles, Kenneth Arnold. The story of Arnold's experience occurred on June 24, 1947, when as a private pilot during a flight near Mount Rainier in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, claimed he saw a set of nine bright objects in the sky. Yeah, I heard Flying that. at the monumental speed of 1,200 miles per hour, the sighting was considered to be the first post-World War II sighting within the United States and sparking an array of investigations, interviews and reports. And I, I want to know your thoughts on this because you hear this all the time that after uh, WW2 World War II, there was a massive uh, UFO sighting. It's that after World War II, there was an increase in sighting and the, the speculation, the theory or the stuff that we hear around is that the ET, the aliens saw like a massive explosion and they were very curious. They didn't want us to blow our planet up. They were very curious when they saw and they were very like surprised and they were worried as well. And this is why they wanted to come. And this is, uh, they, they had talks with the officials that's what we hear like dr steven greer is a prime example he talked about this once as well so i'm actually sourcing him for this one uh do you believe that do you don't believe that where are you at with this uh, do you think that it is a possibility that they really saw us dropping those nukes and this is why they were curious enough to come to our planet because previously they were coming but not like this not like this including that of hirokashi jiro 
Since the event, UFO descriptions and sightings have been the focus and inspiration amongst those in the engineering and technology industries across Japan, including the gaming company, Taito, who developed the legendary Space Invaders arcade video game. Oh, damn. Known for their pioneering working technology, artificial intelligence, and virtual reality, as well as their niche markets of anime, folklore, and tales of horror, Japan has in fact introduced its people to extraterrestrial beings during the Heian period. Traditional myths and legends, such as the tale of the bamboo cutter, written by an unknown author and prominent between the year 794 and 1185, contained elements of alien technologies, while in combination with their time-honored methods of storytelling. In more contemporary times, as recently as June 2021, has the celebration and perception of UFOs been at the forefront of interested parties across Japan? Damn. I honestly think when it's all set in stones, when it's all revealed publicly, when do you think, what year do you think it's gonna happen? Do you think it's not gonna happen? Do you think it's gonna happen in our lifetimes? What year? If you have to take a guess, I would say before 2030 at this point. And it's very apparent to me. It seems like that every government, mostly all the 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 the, the bigger countries or the the first world countries, mostly all of them are trying some way to reveal information, reveal the news. Yeah, we're investigating. Yeah, UFOs are real. They're trying to just ease us to the idea. And obviously, movies are great. Uh, they are the, the the first thing. The media is the first thing that desensitize us. Uh, movies are Marvel movies, I always give this example. They have really opened us to the idea of a bunch of stuff like time travel, multiple dimensions, aliens, ET, different color people uh, in the in intergalactic, in the galaxy, different color people. Uh, obviously, I'm thinking about that green lady that we had in uh, Marvel as well. I'm, I'm, I'm just forgetting her name right yeah. now. Uh, but the situation here is that it is hella suspect. I feel like the reason if the and obviously I could be wrong. Let me know your thoughts on it. But I think the reason they are really just trying to ease us to the idea first is that they want us to be ready, right? Because if they just come out of nowhere, they're like, okay, no, nah, aliens are not real. Aliens are not real. Saying this for years and years, and then all of a sudden, aliens are real. Are you really gonna believe it, uh, or you're not gonna believe it? Most people will be shocked. They will be panicking. Some will not believe it, or a lot of people will not believe it. Some people, even if they ease us, they are easing us to the idea. Whenever they reveal, people will be like, that's Project Bluebeam! I will link you that video, it's a very good video. I will link you that at the end. But the situation, the facts of the matter here is that whatever they do now, there will people will still be skeptical, and rightfully so. You should question everything. You should be open to the ideas, never dismiss anything. You should be open enough to understand and uh, analyze where it's coming from, but you shouldn't believe everything you hear, so dismiss it too. Right, you gotta just cuck it, okay? Right, uh, just cut it from the roots. Don't believe everything, but also don't dismiss everything either. Last year, the International UFO Laboratory was established in the UFO Interactive Hall within the Linomachi district of Fukushima Prefecture. And in commemoration of World UFO Day, Fukushima. it is Japan's first and only research institute and contains a massive collection of over 3,000 materials relating okay. to the phenomenon and attracts approximately 10 times as many visitors to its laboratory each calendar year. Understandably. Despite the growing fascination among the general population, changing the minds of those running the country has been understandably a much more difficult task indeed. For starters, Chief Cabinet Secretary Nobutaka Machimura, when attempting to raise the topic to a group of reporters, was met with an outburst of laughter and pity from those entities who were there to discuss the truth and concerns from those in power. However, in March 2005, Yamain Raiji, of the Democratic Party of Japan. Uh, I love these uh, close-ups, man. Bruh. Expressed the government's interest and concerns regarding UFOs to the General Affairs Committee of the House of Councillors, stressing that a number of unexplained crafts had already arrived here on Earth. Not only were they identified and recorded, the entities were considered hostile to Japanese defense forces and that Damn. of the general population, as well as the silent response from reporters, not to mention the underlying skeptic. And this is one of those things that I heard as well. This is, uh, and it's very wild. I feel like I'm gonna make a video on it. 
uh, remind me if I forget, uh, just comment that if you want to see that video in the future or not. But the thing is that there was one Canadian official, very higher up, okay? I don't remember his name, I would have to Google, but credible guy. Whether he was telling the truth or not, that's up to you to believe. But the fact of the matter here is that he's uh, the government official. I don't know if he passed away or not, I hope he's alive, but he was very old um, and he's government official, been working for the Canadian government for years. He came out a couple of years ago, said that there are seven different species of aliens oh, shit. Oh, shit. That, that he has been told about. Some of them are peaceful, but others are not peaceful. They are quite violent as well. Just like how there are bad apples, there are good apples. Just like how there are bad humans, uh, good humans. Some want war, some don't want uh, war. Some want peace, others don't. You know, it's basically it's similar. And that sounds very logical to me. Because if we cannot be the only one, right? And, and if we're not the only one, how many are there? And if there are multiple of them, at least some of them gotta be hostile. Some of them gotta be like us that are always prioritizing war, uh, thinking about that, thinking, always thinking about negative uh, outcomes and consequences, some of them would be peaceful. Some of them would be so advanced that they wouldn't be like, okay, we, we, we gotta just put that aside, we gotta progress towards peace. But others might also be advanced, but still violent. That's a possibility. There, it, it's, uh, it's definitely crazy. Have you ever looked yourself in the mirror and... <laughs> looked within yourself that's a crazy thing I, I don't think many people do that many people don't even question their existence which is absolutely wild i was having this discussion with uh somebody and i was like do you have that inner voice or do you do you think why you're here do you all do you question yourself like why you're here do you question your purpose it's like what what you talking about like i don't question yeah so there are a lot of bots uh, around us as well that never think they just want to be puppets they just want to get their education, progr be programmed, and work for somebody, and that's it. They're just gonna work till they die. And working is not bad, working is good, but working when you have passion, completely different, and that's where you're gonna find full fulfillment. But the, the point here is that a lot of people don't even question their existence, their purpose, which is absolutely wild. Criticism. Prime Minister Yasu Fukuda would also attempt to soften the blow by stating, later that day, that I have yet to confirm that UFOs exist. Yet, as time and technology has progressed, the global acceptance of UAPs has forced countries like Japan to look at things differently and open their minds to the fact that extraterrestrial events are on the increase. After the coronavirus outbreak, more and more sightings, events and investigations have come to the fore as those affected by lockdowns and home containment were given the opportunity to refocus their attentions and sanction time to put their apprehensions to the side. The good thing about this period of unrest has allowed one to understand the possibilities and global occurrences that have presented themselves for the better. And here's like a truth bomb on you, okay? Regardless of what you think about the mask uh, or no mask, like we're fighting over mask and no mask, which is kind of dumb. If you feel like you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't feel like you don't want to, just don't wear it, right? We uh, The facts are masks don't protect us. That is the truth, okay? It might limit just slightly, but it's not. But that's like another debate. I don't even want to get it. People politi uh, we politicize that, which is absolutely crazy. Just, just absolutely crazy. But the fact of the matter here is that a lot of officials, a lot of whales, when I say whales, I mean people with a lot of money, a lot of whales, they made a lot of money during the Roni situation. When the poor was su uh, suffering, it's the truth, uh, right? The, the saying goes, uh, the, the poor stay poor, the rich get richer. That is true though. A lot of people made a lot of money. People made some of the most amount of money was made, most amount of money was made during the uh, pandemic, which is absolutely crazy because you would think it would be the other way around. People wouldn't be making money because everything was closed. How is that even possible, right? But that is the truth. A lot of people made a lot of money uh, during the, the, the pandemic. So they really control us if you think about it. COVID-19 proved that when large corporate industries and that of universal consumption either shut down or ground to an immediate halt for a short period of time, nature was therefore able to take a breath and refresh the globe with cleaner air, water, and safeguard animal and marine life. Luckily during this time, recordings were released of US Navy fighter jets and their encounters with that of UFOs, which occurred over the last few years and decades. In April 2020, then Defense Minister Kono Taro 
stated that despite the momentous declassification and admission from their US counterparts, pilots of their own self-defense forces had never encountered such aerial phenomena themselves. Nonetheless, Mr. Kono did in fact study the videos presented by the Pentagon himself and made the unpopular decision to test and develop aeronautical defense strategies and procedures in the event that such an encounter took place. The Defense Ministry of Japan, on September 14th, 2020, began the process of informed all military, naval and air force personnel that if an unexplained situation or aircraft presents itself, a protocol- I really wonder where the concept of UFOs came from. Like, who has to be the first guy or gal to believe in the aliens or UFOs? It's one of those questions, right? Like, who was the first person on the planet that realized like we're gonna die like there is like that is actually a thing right so the, the same question here is that who thought let's just say okay hypothetically aliens are not real ufos are not real the government says they are real now but do you want to believe, believe them or not that's up to you but let's just hypothetically say ufos are not real um if they're not real who was the first guy to imagine that because whenever you think it's the same thing right like we talked about it earlier everybody thinks about little green aliens gray aliens big eyes big head small nose uh, slit for a mouth uh, ears barely visible do they even have ears small neck small torso long arms uh, fingers uh, three fingers you know what i mean who was the first guy to think about the and how did he thought how do and how is it that we all think of like triangle pr3b shape ufos or you know circular objects round shape ufos like that because every time it's the same thing it's the same thing right all of analysis reporting and photographic evidence are now considered paramount to their obligations this long-awaited deviation from the norm came after a meeting between Mr. Kono and then US Defense Secretary Mark Esper within the controlled, unincorporated territory of Guam, situated in the Western Pacific Ocean. Both men discussed all things related to defense, militarized strategies, and most importantly, unidentified flying objects. This coupled with the fact that in the capital, Tokyo, the government has advised all citizens to photograph, record, and submit their own findings to their political leaders. What? A combination. Do they do that here in the US? I beg to differ. I doubt so. Combination of statements by the Ministry of Defense in Japan and that of the NHK Defense Forces declared that due to an increase in the use of drones and other objects that fly differently from conventional aeroplanes, if anyone spots an unidentified object in the air that could affect the country's defense, they should report them immediately. Mm. Again in 2020, the Pentagon's Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, UAPTF, was formed as a US government study into the sightings of UAPs and was led by Navy intelligence analysts. There used to be a time when, you know, we would hear, not sure if it was true or not, you let me know if it was true or not, there used to be a time when we would hear, if you've seen a UFO and you took pictures of it, you better destroy that because the men in black will come to get you. They will come to get you and you will never see the light of day because you have to give up all of that. If you took pictures, you gotta give it to them when they arrive. You used to hear that, but not anymore. They are saying that, bro, like, take pictures, okay, tell us, tell us. Analyst, Brenna McKernan, the first official US government funded program of its kind for many years, showed that those associated with its formation and investigations a total of 144 incidents relating to unidentified flying objects demonstrated how serious the Americans were taking the situation. Of the numerous incidents recorded in the document, which amounted to nine pages, oh, Pentagon damn. task forces were only able to decipher one case by offering a moderate, acceptable explanation. The remaining 143 were much more mysterious in nature. A selection of 18 sightings were purported as appearing to remain stationary in winds aloft, move against the wind, maneuver abruptly, or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion, according to the report. A US secretary expert who works both independently and on behalf of the current Biden administration possesses intelligence and the proficiencies that civilian and military officials are extremely concerned that many of the supposed sightings are in fact linked to countries who have a grudge against the United States 
such as Russia and or China. It always is. It always is China, Russia, and US men. Hitoshi Murayama, a Japanese-born physicist, who has excelled and contributed to sterling fields such as cosmology and particle physics, has also entered the conversation. Thank you for subscribing. If you're brand new, hit the subscribe. I will love you forever. Offering his insight to the UFO enigma. Currently a professor at the Center for Theoretical Physics at the University of California, Berkeley, and director of the Cavill Institute for the Physics and Mathematics of the Universe at the University of Tokyo, Hitoshi has the relative credentials to propose his theories in relation to his birthplace and adopted home. Mm. Any planet with an environment similar to that of Earth is thought to be at least about four light years away from us, he said. Damn. Shuttling between such a planet and Earth would take an incredibly long time, even with extremely sophisticated technology. Therefore, if extraterrestrial visitors are involved, it is hard to understand how they travel to Earth so frequently. Man, it is unfathomable that uh, when you start thinking about just the thought alone of billions of galaxies, that just boggles my mind. Just thought, uh, just thought of all the species that we have on this planet. We we all look different. We all have different colors, right? Different shapes. Uh, we all are different in our own ways, right? Different ethnicities. We follow different religions. Some don't even. Uh, we have different animals: uh, dogs, cats, birds. There's uh, marine life out there. They find they they say that they discover about eighteen thousand new species every single year. Oh, shit! Yeah, man, on this planet alone, and there's so much stuff that we don't even know about this planet. There's just crazy amount of stuff, man. And when you just times that with billions of galaxies, and those galaxies all have billions of planets in it, just crazy, man. Just crazy. One may consider this assessment as being rather dubious, yet the amount of investigative professors who have since been drafted for their expertise and opinion speaks for itself. Military experts predict that UAPs capable of alternative flight navigation and maneuverability are and will be impossible to intercept or track using existing modern warfare and weaponry systems. Reports also state that many unnamed objects demonstrate high-level stealth capabilities that defy radar detection. Most worryingly, accumulated reports by US intelligence seems to convey that certain observatory data attributed to top-secret programs, have been set in motion without the knowledge of the aforementioned intelligence and defense officials. Meanwhile, back in Japan, control of surface, air, and maritime defense forces were incapable of constructing offensive strategies relating to UAPs. Operations were only implemented to defend themselves from possible attacks. Being a world leader in technology and AI infrastructure, integration of attack-based weaponry has incorporated an arsenal that consists of American F-15 Eagle fighters. Aegis combat systems for ballistic missile defenses, as well as Type 10 battle tanks on the ground. The F-15 Eagle's maneuverability is capable of functioning in all weather-based conditions and conducts regular aerial demonstrations at air festivals, which are located at Misawa Air Base in the northern part of the island of Honshu. Shigeru Ishiba, who served as Director General of the Japan Defense Agency under Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumu from 2002 to 2004, and was Minister of Defense under Yasuo Fukuda from 2007 to 2008, became worried about the possibility of a hostile attack on his country. Mm. When discussing the strict policy that Japanese retaliation from any adverse attack was the only reason for if you follow Dr. Steven Greer, he always says that they are very peaceful. He is the only guy, in fact, I heard say countless times that they are peaceful, they are peaceful, they are peaceful, they they want a peaceful contact, uh, they don't want any any of that. Uh, but, uh, but there are others that say, and the Canadian official that I talked about, he says there are different entities that are not, some of, some of them are peaceful, some of them are not so peaceful, which I believe, I believe that, I, be, I do believe that some of them definitely are violent, not all of them, but the, the ones that Dr. Steve, uh, Stephen Greer talks about is that they are peaceful. ...for militarized action. Ashiba stated that dealing with UFOs could be a different matter. Ashiba is known as a Junji Otaku, or military geek, and has always had a personal interest in militarized affairs. His expertise in weaponry, as well as the legalities and construction of militaristic arsenal, 
have cemented his connection to the Japanese Defence Forces. Ishiba has consistently pushed for the development of Japan's equivalent to the United States Marine Corps, to be able to defend its numerous small islands from any attack, human-based or otherwise. Mm, other way. Interestingly, and keeping within the concept of Japan's ingrained scepticism, Ashiba's comments and opinions have often been interpreted as humorous. However, it appears that he was extremely serious about the UFO threat after all. So where does this leave us in today's current economical, technological, and militarized climate? As our world continues to change and acclimatize to its surroundings, Famine and illegal wars continue to raise more concerns and questions than solutions or answers. Man. Some may say that such problems must be the core. I really hope WW3 never happens, man. It's uh, the planet is in a disgusting place. That would be even more bad. The focus of our global leaders. This is true for the most part. And yet, we now see a change in awareness and concern regarding the weaponized possibility that UAPs pose to Earth itself. It may sound a little far-fetched now. But if there is no world left to fight for, legally or illegally, then perhaps our greatest fears are yet to reveal themselves. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, click on this video on the screen, the Project Bluebeam, or click the video on the left because Israeli official also did confirm aliens are real. Check these videos out, guys. They don't want you seeing that, and I will see you right there.